Teams are often put together to pursue a particular goal, to make something happen. And the manager, when they put together the team, they have a clear understanding of this goal. Yet, it's very important to communicate this goal to the team as well. In addition to this, communicating it once is not enough. You should be actually meeting with your team at least once a week to communicate the goal again and again. And of course, you may sound like a broken record, but this is very important to make sure that the team realizes the goal. As a matter of fact, the team members need to internalize the goal in their own language. They need to know what is the objective. They need to know what's the goal. And they need to be reminded on a weekly basis by the manager, but they should be reminded of this on a daily basis by each other, by their colleagues working in the team. So typically a working day for a team would start off with clarifying the goal, with making sure that the activities we've done so far fall within the goal that we are pursuing. So in a way, we try to look at the processes and the practices as well as the activities that the team does on a daily basis, but then we need to make sure that they don't divert from the goal. So we don't accomplish activities just for the sake of accomplishing them or marking them with a tick sign, but we need to make sure that each activity brings us a step closer to the realization of the goal. Assuming that we're all aware of the goal on a daily and weekly basis, it's time to consider the conditions of satisfaction. What would really need to happen for us to assume that we have done the task, we have accomplished our goal? And conditions of satisfaction are actually the minimum, the bare minimum of factors that we need to achieve or criteria we need to meet in order to consider that the project has been successful. We can look at conditions of satisfaction in the same way a student would do. So of course the objective or the goal of every student is to get an A for their course, for their assignment, etc. But the condition of satisfaction is the bare minimum to make sure that they pass the course, they pass the unit. So teams also need to establish such bare minimum. If all things go wrong, what do we need to do to make sure that we accomplish something at least that's working for the organization, that makes sense for the organization? As we outline the bare minimum, we need to actually not only look at the bare minimum that the team needs to achieve, but we also need to look at the bare minimum that each member of the team needs to achieve on their assigned role. This will make the accountability process much easier. And also this would bring peace of mind to each individual member because they would know, yes, we aim for this, but even if we have perhaps been too optimistic, we can at least meet the bare minimum. And in most cases, they would at least attempt to be kind of in the middle, maybe if the top result is not achievable, unattainable for various reasons, they would at least try to be kind of in the middle. But you need to know what's the top goal and what's the bare minimum for them to really focus in the mid-ground of this. So it's very important to do so. Something else that's important is to develop a team charter. Team charter really outlines the ground rules of how the team would perform. For example, part of the team charter would be how a meeting would start every time, or how many meetings a week would be having, who collaborates with whom. This could be specified in the, in the charter as well. Norms of communication would be part of that as well. You can consider how people would communicate. Is online communication acceptable? Should it be face-to-face communication? Should it be a combination of both? How perhaps to address any conflict? We need to specify from the very beginning If a conflict arises, who is going to be responsible for managing it, for diminishing the negative influence of this conflict, etc. So these are ground rules that every team needs to establish as they really start, as they really kick off all the work that needs to be done. Some additional aspect that could be mentioned is how would people collaborate, what would happen if somebody cannot deliver on a task, what would happen if somebody gets sick or somebody needs to drop off the team for whatever reasons. So all of these things happen very often. So it always makes sense to be prepared and to consider these way in advance before 
we've actually even started all the heavy lifting for delivering the goals for this specific project. I hope you enjoyed this short video and let's catch up in the next one.